Hello, gorgeous bipeds. It is I, Christina, here at Fit and Bendy, and today we're going to talk about hip flexors. What are they? Where are they? And how we can find a better relationship with our hips by being able to identify them. All right, so let's get started by talking about the deep hip flexors. <laughs> There are multiple muscles that could be considered hip flexors in that they bring your thigh towards your chest, but we're going to talk about the six main ones, how they're similar, how they're different, what they do, how to find them. So let's start by talking about your most effective, best hip flexors. That is the psoas and the iliacus. These are your deep hip flexors. They both attach to the upper inner thigh right in the thigh bone and the iliacus attaches to the inside of your pelvis. The psoas actually attaches all along the inside of your lumbar spine, your lower back. And these are incredibly powerful hip flexor muscles when they are working well. They are absolutely superb at their job. The only problem is we tend to have an epidemic of weak, tight, iliacus and psoas muscles from sitting so much. When we sit, those muscles become compressed and weak. And then we end up starting to rely on some of our less optimal hip flexors. Let's talk about what those are. Another set of hip flexors are our pectineus muscles. These are basically inner thigh muscles. They go right from the pelvis to the inner thigh. They're very short. So they're not as effective as those other bigger muscles at lifting the leg. However, they can do the job. And if your other hip muscles aren't working, they might end up overworked, which is gonna give you very tight, grouchy inner thigh muscles. Similarly, the tensor fascia lata, which is an outer hip muscle, which is attaches to your hip bone and then runs down your IT band to your knee, is also a hip flexor muscle. It can lift your leg. It also does internal rotation and can move your leg away from the center. It does a lot of different things. And so it can get really overworked and stressed out and super resentful. And that can create a very tight outer hip feeling right here on the outside of your hip. It can also make knee and ankle problems because the influence of that muscle runs all the way down your leg. And one of the ways you know that you're overusing your TFL muscle is when you lift your knee, your hip comes up as well. That's a sure sign that that TFL is grouchy and overworked. And then finally, we have our two really big muscles in our thighs that both work our knees and our hips. The first one of those is the sartorius. The sartorius starts at our upper inner lower leg and it crosses across the thigh in this beautiful sweeping diagonal to attach to the hip bone here. And this is the muscle of ballet dancers because it's going to turn your leg out Lift your thigh and bend your knee. Look familiar, right? Perfect ballet muscle. So this is a great muscle if you want to make this particular thing happen. It's not the most effective hip flexor if you want to lift your knee up super high and get your leg in close to your chest. Same thing can be said of the rectus femoris. It also attaches to the hip bone and it is one of your quadricep muscles. It's the biggest one. It runs right down the front of your leg and attaches just below your knee. So it straightens your knee like you're kicking a soccer ball and it brings your knee up towards your chest. So it is a very useful muscle having to do two really important things, but because it does two things, it's not the absolute best muscle for either one of those things. So again, you can use it to flex your hip, but what will happen is it will become very tight and overworked if you're not using it without the help from the psoas and the iliacus. And that can create, again, very tight quads. It can pull your hips forward and it can get very, very bulky. So if you notice that you're starting to get huge quads compared to all the other muscles in your body, again, that's a good sign that you're overusing that rectus femoris and underusing your deep hip flexors. I have another video all about how to find and make friends with your psoas and iliacus muscle. It is linked below. So please turn on your notifications notifications. You can find out more about when I drop these sorts of juicy, good tidbits and check out that video on the psoas to learn more about how to activate your deep hip flexors and balance out your pelvis muscles. Thank you so much for watching and please like, and subscribe. Happy bendings, everybody.